Well, I don't know about you, but I've got a soft spot for a good pair of shoes. I love my shoes. So while I'm in Northampton, which is, incidentally, the shoe capital of Europe, I'm going to pop into the very upmarket and classy Crockett and Jones to find out exactly how a good pair of shoes is made. In 1879, James Crockett and Charles Jones, both a bit strapped for cash, set up in business with just £100. They started with 20 staff, built the business up, and in 1924 were rewarded with royal patronage and a visit from King George VI. And the company is still family-run after all these years. So let's go and meet the managing director, Jonathan Jones, who's a direct descendant of one of the original co-founders of the company, Charles Jones. Jonathan, it's good, good to see you. What a marvellous factory. Surrounded by shoes as well. I'm in shoe heaven. It's wonderful to see a family-run business still. Yes, yes, we are a family business for uh, four generations. Mm. And... Um, we are still making shoes the way that we have been for the last hundred years. I mean, you've selected a pair for me here, Yes, that's you? right. Yes. And they, they, they look very practical, and the weight in them, <laughs> that's real quality, isn't it? This is a chuckaboot from um, our, our current uh, stock range. Mm -hmm. It's quite a long, involved process, shoemaking. When people go around the factory, they're always surprised how long it takes to make a pair of shoes. We're talking about something like 200 different processes. 200? Something like that and uh, it takes around about eight weeks from start to finish in our factory because although we can to some extent take advantage of modern technology in certain areas, there's an awful lot of handwork involved mm. and uh, making shoes like this is it, a bit of an art as well as a manufacturing process. Do you know they are very very smart aren't they? They look as though they fit you quite well. Beautiful uh, colour. Well, you can feel the difference. We often find that uh, once people have our shoes on, uh, they don't worry quite so much about the price and uh, become loyal customers. I'm going to hide my cheek once. <laughs> in the Middle Ages, Northampton became the most important centre in England for the tanning trade, mostly because the town was conveniently placed for the North, London and East and West routes. In addition, Northampton was surrounded by forests which provided an abundance of oak bark, an essential tanning ingredient. And where tanning and leather is readily available, it wasn't long before the shoemakers gathered. And this is where it all starts. Steve, is it? Yes. Hello, Hello pleased Paul. to meet you. He Hi. told me I could find you here. Yeah. So you're the guy in charge of all the hide, all the skins. Well, this area controls all the quality for the business, right. incoming goods, and we have to make sure that... It meets all the qualifications, you know, and standards and quality. You've got some mixed hide here. Yeah. I can just see by the yeah. just by the finish. What's this? This is this tough, is American pull-up leather. Right. Older animal, natural scars. Yeah. Big scars, healed scars. This is a calf, which is most high-class manufacturers use now. Yeah. This is what we start with the raw material, and this is when we've antiqued it. Okay, that's the basic colour. It all, no, it all comes colour. out like that. Yeah. You steep it in a liquid? No, no, what we do is, in the final stages of the shoes, we apply antique creams, polish, antique creams, polish. Virtually mm -hmm. like you Very apply. much like a woodworker. Yeah, just to enhance the grain and the alkalinity of the product. Where's that scar again? Where did you show me that scar? Did you have to repair that scar? No, you it? can't use that. No, you can't use that. No, you can't use that. That'll split eventually, won't it? Yeah. You? Right, Steve, where do I go next? Go with, Point me in the right direction. We then have to go that way to, okay. for the clicking. All right, the clicking sounds yeah. good. Yeah. Thanks very much. Okay, bye. Hi, Graham. Hi. Hello. You're one of the clickers. Why do they call you a clicker? Well, it stems back from a long time ago that when the knife comes from the pattern, it clicks. Okay, show me, show me what you mean by that. So here we go. Round the pattern. Oh, oh yes. Just a little click off the yeah, leather? Yes, just a little click as it comes out. So you're given a load of patterns here and you've got to cut the leather out. That? Yeah, that's right. The jobs come round and obviously you get the, the best part of the leather, which is the prime part for the best part of the shoe, and then you work away I for see. the rest of the to shoe. To the edges, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Very sharp knife. That oh, just, yes. That cut through yeah. that like butter. There are Let's have a look. hacksaw blades. Hacksaw? <laughs> old hacksaw blades? Yeah, old hacksaw blades. Just grind the teeth off of them and then sharpen them to the shape wow. that you want. Well, that looks really difficult to do because I know that's hard to cut as quick as that. Where do I go from here? Oh, down to the closing room. Down to the closing. Yes. Thank you. Okay, see you again. Is that difficult? Very. It looks difficult. Just so I don't mess up. 
That is very, very clever. Are the ladies' shoes harder to work on than the men's? Yeah, because they're a lot smaller. Sorry to stop you in your work. That's fine. You're in perforation. I can see now exactly what, yes. what you're doing. Yes, been doing it for 25 years. Wow. Oh, gosh. <laughs> 25, you're yes. You're obviously very good at what you do. It's looking more and more like a shoe. Sorry to butt in. So what's that then? That's leather softener. Okay. Just to put it on the toes uh, to help the stain, help to moisten it. Then just put it in the machine. Which pulls it over. That's clever. It'll stop on that last now for two or three weeks. I'm impressed with that. Thanks a lot. That's right. One of the unique Crockett and Jones features is the cork-filled sole, which provides such wonderful insulation that it was used for an early Sir Ernest Shackleton polar expedition. And it proved so successful it was subsequently used for a further voyage in 1914. Dave, hello. Welting uh, process. Yes. Talk me through what you're doing now. Well, we basically we put a strip of welt in and we sew it through the ribbing on the shoe. OK. Which then gives us the foundation for sticking the sole, the sole and stitching through the welt. That looks hard to do. <laughs> they told me it was good money when I started. It's good money, really. How many did you do a day, then? About 300 pairs. It's okay, technically a skilled one. job, yeah. 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 Its uniqueness is that once you've put it in, if you want to mend this at any stage, you can simply do that. Ah, it's a right. chain, it's a chain stitch, so you can remove the whole process to mend the shoe, unlock a stuck on. Yes. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Unlock the stuck ons. You notice that straight yeah. away. Yeah. Always notice what somebody's got on the feet. <laughs> But basically, that's what basically, makes it Basically, I've got to treat myself to a new pair of shoes well, while I'm here. just go in the factory shop, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Down the factory shop. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that, Dave, and I'm going to treat myself to a new pair of shoes. Yeah. Mention your morning, Amy, you get 10% discount. <laughs> that was incredible. And here, well, here's the finished product. Now, who... Would have thought that there's over 200 different processes into making a single shoe. Wouldn't have believed that. But they don't come cheap, mind you. The average price is 250 to 350 pounds. But they will last you a good 10 to 20 years. So you could say, a bit of a bargain.